Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday here. And today I'm actually recording four different videos. I'll break them up into four different parts and we're going to be covering React Suspense. Um, just to cover, I've got a, a final demo that I'll link um, below the video, but what we're going to be covering is Suspense using React.lazy. Um, the same thing, but with Reach Router and see how we can break up basically each page into its own separate um, suspense lazily loaded um, request. Then we're going to be diving a little bit deeper and we're going to be building two different hooks that will allow us to take advantage of suspense ourselves. So the first video, very short, we'll just be going over how to use React Lazy and how suspense ties into that. And the reason you'd want to do this is basically because when you, whenever you use um, Webpack with Create React App, which we're going to be covering today, what Webpack does is it basically bundles all the JavaScript you need into a single file. Um, here I'm looking, I've got three files. I think two of them are probably just because I'm running in development mode, but it creates this massive bundle of JavaScript and sends that to the client. But um, if that bundle gets too big, you're, it can slow your website down because it has to download a big file. Um, if people have slow internet, has to do a lot of processing to basically boot up your app. So what we can do is basically lazy load components or modules so that the app can boot up really quickly and then once it's ready, it will go and fetch the other code needed. So say for example, you're importing a component that requires some, some big PDF parser or something like that. You could lazily load all that code in uh, so it'll increase your uh, boot up time and uh, it will basically you'll end up with two smaller JavaScript files instead of one big one. So what we're going to do is we're going to build a nav. So nav.js and we'll import react. And normally you probably wouldn't lazy load your nav in but uh, for a simple example. So we'll do a functional component that has a nav and it will just say nav here. So very small and we'll export, uh, oops, export default nav. So now I can use this normally in my app. So we'll import it and then we'll just put it inside of this div here. So we've got our, uh, I can't type, our nav. So this is not lazily loading anything. This is just the typical way of doing React. If we come back, we've got our nav in here. Uh, if I do like a hard refresh, um, we've still got our main chunk. It's got some hot update stuff, but uh, it's still loading it all in one. So if I take a look here and I search for nav, um, you can see that it's it's got all our nav code in here. And this is breaking it down into the what it's actually doing. But uh, let's forget about that for now. All right, let's lazy load it. So the way you do that is instead of just straight up importing it, you use react lazy and you say um, const nav equals react.lazy. And this receives uh, an arrow function or a function. And what the function should do is now it should import nav like that. So now we can delete our normal import and if we reload the page we get an error. And the reason is um, React is expecting us to wrap a suspense component around this because basically when the page loads there's going to be a split second when it hasn't yet made a subsequent request um, for this one dot chunk file here which is some JavaScript very small file as you can see which is just containing our nav so it makes a little request to get this but reacts wondering basically what do I do um, before I've I've actually received this nav back from the server so it wants suspense to basically handle the loading state and as we dive into suspense its main goal is basically to give you an easy way to manage asynchronous code um, normally with asynchronous code, you're, you're trying to manage, is it loading? Has it finished loading? And depending what the state is, uh, you render something that says loading or you render the actual result, but you have to keep track of the whole thing with 
with a state variable or something like that and update it yourself and have your if statement yourself. Suspense handles all of this for us. So we're going to be using React Suspense and we'll wrap this around our nav. And basically what it will do is it will try to load the nav, but this returns a promise. And whenever there's a promise, that basically gets thrown up and caught by suspense. And suspense will render some sort of fallback until the promise from this asynchronous code has been resolved. And when that happens, it will re-render nav and show the actual nav rather than the fallback state. So we'll have our fallback here. And we're just going to create a little loading component that says loading nav and maybe it, it could actually be a nav element um, like that so it's going to be really quick but you can see for a split second it says loading nav and then it pops in the actual nav and um, what this is doing again is it's trying to render nav but because it's asynchronous suspense uh, catches that asynchronous promise and it renders the fallback until it has been resolved, in which case it re-renders nav and because it's there this time, because the promise has resolved, it's able to show the actual nav. Um, so you may use this technique, uh, think about like LinkedIn, hope it will happen, there we go. See for like a split second they're loading, um, not anymore, maybe on Facebook. Yeah, see for a split second, it's loading that like little loading state. You could design a fallback that looks like that instead. It doesn't have to just be text that says it's loading something. It could have like a nice little GIF that's, that's um, animating and telling the user that something else is coming. So that's the most basic suspense example we have. Using React Lazy to lazily import a whole other uh, component tree and package that it, it may be importing all of its own stuff, really heavy packages. And uh, Create React App with Webpack uh, comes built in with code splitting. So it, it puts this in its own JavaScript file that is fetched. Suspense handles calling the fallback until it's actually ready. So as I said, short video. I'm going to end this one and then we're going to do the next one. If you're interested, we're going to see how we can use React Lazy with Suspense with routing. So we'll be using Reach Router, which comes built in with Suspense support. All right, see you soon. Bye.